different fields uh, with a bit less data. It's about time series modeling of plant production products in aquatic system. It's an analyz analysis of government governmental monitoring data. My name is Andrea Schmüller, and I'm together with Mira Katwinkel and Ralf Schäfer from the working group Quantitative Landscape Ecology in Landau in Germany. Yeah, and we basically use R and other open sor source software in the field of GS uh, for in the field of ecotoxicology, and we mainly focus on plant, plant protection products, or as you call, also call them, pesticides, uh, and their fate in the environment, and especially in aquatic systems. Why is it interesting to study pesticides? In modern agriculture nowadays, they are highly used also in private gardens, they have environmental concern and maybe you followed the debate about glyphosate or neonicotinoids in the media. So for example, neonicotinoids were just prohibited two or three weeks ago by the EU Commission. And to give you some quickly some numbers, just in Germany um, there is 700 or about 750 products that you can find with about 270 different substances and mainly you can group pesticides and fungicides, herbicides and insecticides which focus on the different um, taxonomic group like fungi and plants and insects. Um, so now coming to the data, this is the data we have, governmental monitoring data we have from Germany, it's from federal monitoring pro programs, it was gathered, collected between 2005 and 15. It's roughly 3,000 sampling sites and about 3 million substance detections. But it's not only pesticides, there's also a lot of, a lot of other data inside and together it's about 500 different substances. Yeah, and we uh, got this data from the federal states, put it into an SQL database and that's also the way I, I access it before doing the analysis. So just to give you an example, on from one side uh, in a stream, the measured concentrations of glyphosate. So you see between 2008 and 2014, and we have a lot of zeros. This is due to, um, due to a limit of quantification. Whenever you do chemical, whenever you take a chemical sample and you do chemical analysis, the machine um, has a limit of quantification, like it's for glyphosate in this case, it's around 0 0.01. And all the values that are, the concentrations that are below, it can be detected, but they, it, the machine is not able to quantify it. So we have a, a lot of zeros here. And actually most of the, our data consists of these detected but not quantified substances. Um, so there's the excess of zeros. We um, generally, it's also quite a heterogeneous data set in terms of sampling frequency. It was done by 13 different federal states and they did it in a different way. Also, this limit of quantification could change over time, uh, not in this case. And also, the measured compounds were right over time, so they got more over time. And as pesticides are brought to the fields, like in in spring or summer, we do have a seasonal variability of the input into aquatic systems. And um, when we wa want to say something about the effect of, of the substances on the ecosystem, and we want to somehow make the uh, substances comparable. So um, a 10 micrograms of a substance A is, isn't as toxic as the 10 micrograms of a substance B. That's why ecotoxicologists came up with um, such dose response tests to, um, with different organis organisms like fish, invertebrates, or algae to get the EC50 value, like a value where 50, uh, a dose where 50% of, for instance, algae growth is inhibited or 50% of the insects have died. And luckily, this has been done a lot over, over the <coughs> last decades. And there's a quite valuable database from the EPA in our field, and we also you can download it, and we also build it as a SQL database and use this um, EC50 values to make the concentrations comparable. 
and basically you just um, you have the concentrations and you divide it the in-stream concentrations you divide it by an EC by the EC50 according to the uh, organism group and then we take the log 10 and then that's the toxic unit which is a, f uh, a frequently used measure in in our field um, from this on we had two research research questions um, first one was um, do we have months of increased uh, in-stream occurrence of pesticides so do we really see an increase in um, in, in spring or in autumn and for this we set up an occurrence or so-called occurrence model and we um, um, which is just which transform the concentrations into either could be quantified and a one or could not be quantified but detected to a zero and this response PA we, mo we model in uh, with the covariates month, year and different sites. Second question was um, how are the different um, organism groups like I showed you before algae invertebrates fish affected by the pesticide concentrations throughout the year and here we use this TU toxic units that I've shown you before to model its continuous data and also normally distributed and uh, in response to how we show we model how the toxic units in response to month and sites. We did some further data preparation, like we refined the data say just to Saxony, Saxony, the state here, because of the quite homo heterogeneous sampling effort, we refined it to the three pesticide groups, and like this we have some 400 sites left in the state, and um, when you have a look at the count of um, quantified pesticides, so the, pes the measurements that were only detected but not quantified were set to zero, and so this is just the number of uh, quantified pesticides. We see that herbicides are by far the most frequent quantified group, followed by fungicides and insecticides, and this is also just due to because um, herbicides were for a long time much more interesting in, in the ecotoxicology. Also insecticides, they have chemical properties like physical chemical properties, they are washed away quickly and it's harder to just sample them. So it's physical and chemical constraints which leads to this. And we refined our data set also to um, just 31 substances in the end by only taking uh, for our models the substances into account which have a, a quantification detection ratio of greater than 5%. And so let's directly come to the models. We, um, the occurrence model, we um, used the MGCV package and fitted a gum for each uh, generalized ad additive model. Um, for each substance, like from the 31 substances, and had this binary response and uh, yeah, and the covariates, and year and site also has random effects and yeah, binomial binomial response and the restricted maximum likelihood algorithm. Um, coming directly to results, for example, a herbicide terbutulazine, um, which on the y-axis you have the probability that the, the, the axis or the, the fit is greater than uh, the limit of quantification and we can nicely um, model its occurrence and we al also see that um, it's most frequent in, in June and July which also is in coherence with the, um, with, with the application of the substance. And here we don't see any uh, change over the years, over time, so it rather stays constant, the, the number of quantifications for the ratio. And we also did this for simazine, which is a, a substance of also similar to terbutulazine, and it shows a similar, similar pattern, however with a bit broader variety. And simazine on the long term shows a decrease, which also makes sense as it was 
prohibited in around 2000 for usage in Europe. Um, we also did this, of course, for oleadas and uh, uh, herbicides and substances, and, we wa and I wanted to show you, um, we also have the within the group of herbicides, we have pre-emergence herbicides that are, um, um, so you want to plant, let's say, rapeseed in, um, in September, and before that you want to get rid of all the other plants that are on the field, and for this, these pre-emergence herbicides are applied, and metazochlor, clemazone, and dimetachlor, um, for this we could um, trace quite plausibly the also the, the occurrence. We've done this for, um, for fungicides as well, for example, for carbendazim, and this shows like the seasonal um, fit shows a broader, broader pattern or broader picture, and which makes al also sense because herbicides ha are applied once or twice a year, and fungicides, they are rather constantly applied even above 10 times a year. And yeah, this was the occurrence model. Now coming to the effect model. Um, here we calculated the toxic units for these three organism groups. And um, then we took, aggregated it by site and month and took the maximum for each group. And this is the, yeah, so to say we mo modeled the maximum um, of these toxic units over the, the months and for each site. What's happening now? Excuse me. Difference. There is a picture missing. It's not a <laughs> well, let's try it once more with the with the beamer. <laughs> I press some pause. <laughs> it doesn't work. I don't understand Hungarian. <laughs> you, you sure? keep on talking maybe and <laughs> um, yeah now it's about the effect model it's also flickering here <laughs> and yeah here we modeled the maximum toxic unit for the al for algae for example for fish or invertebrates in dependence of month and sites as a random effect uh, with norm from normally distributed response and yeah basically we see for the three maximum toxic units also a uh, uh, seasonal pattern and but generally the toxic units are uh, on a range from minus three to minus five and and we know from the literature that we would expect ah, there it is the plot thank you and like yeah the seasonal patterns also um, for the toxic units and but it's all below minus three and from the literature, we know that we would expect um, effects on aquatic communities uh, uh, on, uh, on a, a for values above uh, minus 2.5. So, coming already to the conclusion, like what we could do with the occurrence model, we were able to identify peaks of occurrence or quantifications. Um, at least for well-measured, well-sampled substances. Um, the effect model I just showed you, it's probably under underestimating the, the real effect. 
and this is due to uh, the sampling effort by the federal states and also due to physical and chemical properties and it's sometimes costly and hard to measure these substances in the water. What are the next step is we I could still work on the model and include interactions and still refine the selections of the EC50 values and in the future let's also plan to use, include other covariates like percentage of agriculture in or around such a, sm a stream or precipitation on or before the sampling date because pesticides are simply uh, washed from the fields when it rains. Okay, just a list of packages and tools I've used in R. It's, yeah, data table, MGCV, and ggplot for plotting. The slides were done in with Markdown and NITR and Sharingan, and for data storage, it was ma mainly PostgreSQL. Yeah, and with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I'm open for questions. Thank you, Andreas. Questions? Okay, well, I think we're going to take advantage of a little bit of time that we've won. Andreas, thank you.